Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So now we're entering the part two, final part of the introduction to excited tissues. We laid a good foundation in the part one, talking about why nerves and muscles are referred to as excitable tissues. Okay, nerves, communication, muscles, they are major, very important effectors. Remember the homeostatic control system and all of that. Okay, so that's, that's that. So now we're gonna be dealing with classification of nerves. It's very important that you know that. Nerves can be classified in different ways, okay? But first, I'm going to start with the functional classification, which is otherwise known as the physiological classification. So, classification based on function. So, based on function, how do we classify nerves? Based on function, okay? They could be either sensory nerves or motor nerves what do you mean by that the sensory nerves are also known as the afferent remember the control system okay the receptor the afferent control center efferent effector this is the effector sen receptor okay so this is afferent efferent so this sensory so from here you already know what it will mean so sensory takes from the rest of the body, receives information, which is known as sensory information. It senses, sensor, okay? Receives information and takes it to the brain, all right? So you have A, sensory, also known as afferent, sensory nerves, then B, motor nerves, Motor, also known as efferent nerves. Okay, so the motor takes from the central nervous system, the brain structures, and so on, and then returns it to other parts of the body, especially muscles, different kinds of muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and even glands effectors it takes it to effectors so that's functional classification nerves can also be classified according to structure function structure okay so number two based on structure okay so based on structure how do we classify nerves remember you see this structure here these structures we told you that we told you that some nerves do not have the squan cells or myelin sheet okay so you have myelinated nerves and you have on myelinated nerves okay so all right so function and structure how else can we also classify nerves nerves can be classified based on distribution that means structures in the body that they supply and there are two major categories one supplying the muscles the outside part of the body you know the muscles skeletal muscles supplying skeletal muscles why the ones that supply internal structures internal organs arteries and veins and all of that those are the two major categories and they are called what one is called somatic nerves the ones that supply skeletal muscles and the ones that supply internal organs and all of that they're called autonomic nerves okay so number three based on distribution
nerves. Okay, these somatic nerves, they are usually voluntary. Voluntary, you can control them by your will. Autonomic nerves, they are involuntary. Okay, you can also further divide this autonomic into parasympathetic and sympathetic. So we're going to learn specially the autonomic nervous system. So just, this is just to make you know that there's a group of nerves known as autonomic nerves. Okay, so you can also classify nerves based on the origin. Based on origin. Number four. There are some nerves that they originate from the brain, the structures in the brain. I know that the skull is also known as cranium, right? Usually the, there are some parts of the brain known as the brain stem yeah, in, the, in the skull. So they are known as cranial nerves. They originate from the brain. Cranial nerves and those that originate lower in the spinal cord you know you have the brain something like this okay then it comes you have the cerebellum then you now have the spinal cord come so there are some that originate from here supply structures in the head and neck then some that originate from this place are known as spinal nerves so based on origin you have cranial nerves cranial nerves and be spinal spinal nerves all right so these are four classifications but we're not done another very important classification of nerves is based on their size which in other words also based on their conduction velocity how fast they can conduct electricity the bigger the nerve the faster they can actually conduct electricity so that one is based on conduction velocity okay that's number five let's write it here number five based on conduction velocity and they could be classified as type a type b and type c just like that very easy very easy so under this one, you have so the type A, they are the largest, followed by the type B, followed by the type C. So this type A nerves, they you can subdivide them into A alpha, A beta, A delta a gamma okay so the a alpha is the biggest like that all right so that's how it is and it happens that actually this type a and a lot of type b they are myelinated you see it why the type c the smallest they are all unmyelinated so you see the five different ways so, so, so when you are learning them you don't get confused so depending on what your focus is you can classify the nerves like that sometimes you are concerned with their distribution so we're talking about autonomic nerve somatic nerve sometimes you are concerned with where they originate from i say spinal nerves so when you say spinal nerves you know what i'm talking about when you say cranial nerves you know what i'm talking about but mainly in physiology this is the most common way we refer to nerves how we classify them all right so after the break we're going to be dealing with axonal transport this is the axon substances a lot of substance move to and fro from this cell body move away from the cell body move towards the cell body something very important you need to learn about axonal transport so i'm going to be talking about that after this break All right, you're welcome back. Now we're going to be dealing with axonal transport. Why? Why? Now, there's something very important for you to note. 
that this action you are seeing here which is also most of the time referred to as the nerve fiber sometimes can be very long sometimes up to one meter two meters maybe even three meters very long and there's something you need to know that everything this is the cell body cytoplasm nucleus protein synthesis everything starts from here resources the cell body but when the this axon terminal okay when it's trying to connect and transfer electricity to the next neuron what happens is that it secretes what is known as neurotransmitters do you understand that so this place these axon terminals they have what's known as nice bodies n-i-s-s-l nice soul bodies which are actually rough endoplasmic retinal that synthesize those um, neurotransmitters most of them are peptides okay peptides nice soul bodies so but everything starts here protein synthesis starts here so a lot of resources needs to be transported from here the cell body down to this axon terminal where there is a release of neurotransmitters through the process of exocytosis you know about exocytosis from general physiology okay so both mitochondrial endoplasmic reticulum and so on and so forth some other cell organelles they will need to move through a very long distance three meters is a long distance for a neuron okay so there needs to be an efficient mechanism by which the body needs to transport such resources and cell organelles okay and that is through the aid of a cytoskeletal protein known as what microtubules let's write it down the transport in nerves is based on microtubules and microtubules you can understand it like this they are like railway tracks okay they are tracks and in the railway track you now have the train okay that carries either human beings or other cargo load so the microtubule is like the railway track okay then you need the what is the train the train is known as microtubule associated proteins microtubule let's write it down microtubule maps for short okay they're also known as what molecular motors also known as molecular motors so they're like the train that carry um, load that carry cargo so these molecular motors inside the microtubules they're the ones that now carry cell organelles like mitochondrion because they need atp as the molecular motors are carrying moving they are using atp hydrolysis of atp okay they are using atp so they are breaking down atp releasing the energy needed for that long distance movement all right so there are two ways in which this transport can go it can go from the cell body to the axon terminal and sometimes from the axon terminal back to the cell body sometimes some of those cell organelles and resources need to be recycled for resynthesis okay and even viruses the way they attack cells like polio virus and so on they move from this axon terminal to the cell body polio virus and other types of viruses okay so when it's moving from the cell body to the axon terminal it's known as anterograde transport let's write it down one anterograde transport can also be called autograde okay autograde ok 
okay from the soma okay a cell body cell body to terminal right then another one when it's coming from the axon terminal to the cell body it's known as retrograde transport right it's just the exact opposite from terminal to cell body right then lastly there's something important you need to know this microtubule associated protein or molecular motors they are specialized in the direction in which they carry resources or cargo okay so the anterior grade transport the molecular motor involved is known as what kinesin kinesin then the retrograde transport the molecular motor involved is known as dynein okay this one is known as dynein all right so these are the two molecular motors very important for you to know okay sometimes you can be asked multiple choice questions so these are the types of transport from cell body to the axon terminal from axon terminal to a very efficient mechanism all right so that's what you need to know about the classification and the axonal transport the axon right so i'm going to see you in the next video